So, hi, welcome. This is Julius Horsthaus. Horsthaus, actually, but you can just pronounce it Horsthaus if you want. It means the same in Dutch. So, uh, this is a little tutorial that I did. I recorded this in two hours and I, um, I cut out all the rendering parts and I sped it up by four times. So, what you're, what you're seeing is, is not real time. It's, uh, sped up by, by four times. Um, and it's a still. And there will be some post processing as well, so you can like see um, how this how this whole thing uh, just evolves basically from just playing around with these fractals. I started with a Celtic and an amazing box with a Gnarl 3D half oct IFS and a folding integer power. Basically, all the I just entered those into the um, into the formulas, and then I'm starting to play with with uh, with them. Mostly, I I change all the formulas in the in the 3D navigator because you can get like real time feedback. But sometimes you have to to go into the um, formula window in order to, for instance, um, swap the formulas or to change a formula. So you can also uh, it's also the slot that the formula is in. You have six slots in Mandelbulbs one, two, three, four, five, six, and you can uh, swap slot four and five, for instance. And actually, sometimes that will really change what um, how they interact, especially stuff like um, polyfold symmetry will will in the first slot it will make the, the entire thing into one big symmetrical fractal, but in the second or third slot it will actually only make parts of it uh, uh, symmetrical or round even, and that's interesting. Sometimes I also switch on Julia just to see what happens. Here I am playing with a Gnarl 3D doing a little test render because I thought I saw something interesting but the gnarl here really shows those um, little waves and I don't really like it because it really shows like it's this world space modifier type of type of thing that that happens which is interesting but but not nice and here we're starting to get some funny round things and some so this is like probably the first time where I was going Hey, this is interesting. This is something. This because you 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 know you got to be lucky. You gotta you gotta have some 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 luck to get something nice. And of course, the more you do something, um, the bigger the chances is that that you'll find something like an interesting angle. So here I tried some presets of lighting as well that I have, which I will provide, and you can download them on my website. Um, and this is starting to look like something underwater so with the blue kind of foggy distance and all the kind of tentacle or coral type of shapes this for me is what I felt like okay this is maybe an underwater scene so from here on I that's where I'm kind of going like okay I when I started I didn't know it was going to be an underwater thing it could be anything but if it's interesting, hmm, this is underwater. Okay, so then I'm trying to more get towards that goal. Here I'm trying something else. I'm trying a DE Combinate to try and get first a Reman and now a Mandel box. Uh, an amazing box, I mean. Amazing box Platinum B. I'm trying to combinate that with a DE Combinate with the fractal that I had. But not really with success. So here you can see some of that, like some of that structure beside the organic stuff but because of the size of the box and I couldn't really get it to fit with the rest I actually gave up on this um, path and here I'm opening again a file that I just saved so here we're back in the uh, non-DE combinate mode and, um, and looking at this so zooming out changing around going looking at different stuff in the fractal, changing some of that formula again a little bit. So now we're, there's a lot of little spiral things going on and little tentacle-like objects, which are interesting for underwater. So 
So just trying to get that like nice angle. So here I'm kind of seeing an octopus in there, like behind, a little bit left to the center. I, I, I just it looks a little bit like an octopus, um, in a way. So then I got lucky and I got these two eyes as well. But then I render and I realize, meh, not so much. So here I'm trying to get some, some of those colors to, to match that kind of octopus type of animal. See what the, what, what the lighting does and, and how I can get the, um, uh, like how the basically U, not UV texture coordinates, but U texture coordinates, basically a one dimensional coordinate system that you have in these, uh, this, 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 these color, um, are basically like the colors that are mapped onto that one dimensional thing. So, just trying to do different things here, dial different colors in. See what that, what that, um, the, the depth, which will, which is a little bluish. And here I'm calculating volume light to see what, what that, what that looks like. So it's re rendering first, um, but I have, um, I have the volume light now. Yeah. So with the dynamic fog, which is actually the same as the volume light, if you, uh, if you get that button, the volume light and dynamic fog, then it will change the dynamic fog from the volume light, and we'll have the same sliders in that dynamic fog thing to to um, to see how much how much light you need and 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 so forth. So here I'm looking for for a different angle. I've just uh, I've got that same lighting setup now. So I was it's. I was kind of happy with that. It, 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 it looked like it was going somewhere, but I'm just looking if there's an, it, like a more interesting angle in this in this uh, in this world. Actually, here I'm looking at something which no, it's not more interesting at all. So I'm zooming out again, going to one of those different planets almost. Um, and here I'm seeing something round, which is interesting. Yeah, because I got this. I have this uh, polyfold symmetry thing now on in slot four uh, to see if we can get some nice more roundish things. So here we're starting to look at maybe something a little bit more, looks almost like a, a sunken uh, a motor of, of a plane or a ship or something, something which is less organic but more geometric. So I'm calculating that with the volume light. Takes a little while. Yep, so here we go. This is interesting, I think. So, it's a nice angle. There is definitely something there, maybe indeed like an old airplane ship that has been overgrown with coral and stuff. But there is this symmetry thing going on as well that I don't really like. So here I actually I switch off the polyfold sim. Here I'm having it at 600. But with it off, it's still got that round thing. Apparently the roundness didn't come only from the polyfold, but also from... Um, from the amazing from the amazing box or anything else, it's still round, but not. Here I'm just trying different things, and I can easily undo them by saying reset value. That's the undo button of uh, for these sliders, which is very useful. Trying some other things. I oh, trying here an amazing surface. Sometimes they're really nice, and you can have them for high high iterations, and they uh, they they contribute amazing. But they do they do change. The, the underlying formula a lot, so it completely lost my, my nice angle. So I, uh, I stopped here. Here I'm doing a, a longer render, which I, will, um, uh, which I won't completely show you because it's too long, even at four times speed. I think this could take easily about 10, 15 minutes. So this is after it rendered, the last bit. Where we see the, um, the ambient occlusion. I always use the uh, DAO, the, the latest one, the last one of the of the four uh, slots that you can choose, because it's really the best. It takes the longest, but it gives the most photorealistic result. Here I'm trying to maybe a little bit more green things, trying to play with the colors, 
see if we can get something interesting. The depth, the dynamic fog, which is now the volume light still, which is hard to, to get that. You often get this, uh, it completely blows out all the whites with the volume light. Okay, I'm trying to slightly change my angle, maybe a bit lower, so it's a bit more, a bit more interesting angle. Now doing a, a, a low resolution render again, to see if this angle is something that I like. And I think it is because this is the angle I ended up using. So we're finally getting to that to that final result. Okay, so the dynamic fog is off, or sorry, the dynamic fog is on, the volume light is off now. So now you can see that white stuff does something completely different. This this whiteness, that's the dynamic fog, which is very nice usually, and I usually use it more than volume light. Volume light takes a very long to render. But in this case, the underwater thing, the volume light really contributes to the to the underwater feeling because uh, well those you have those caustic rays, the sun rays underwater. Um, are very specific to uh, underwater scenes. So, rendering again the volumetric light map, which I have set now to minus two in quality, and it's still good enough, but it really, really saves a lot of rendering time. So, pretty good. I'm always watching this, by the way, at one, uh, one, two viewing, so I'm watching it uh, already anti-aliased, because um, I really hate the, uh, the, the aliasing if you just view it 100%. Here I'm trying some different colors in the uh, in the dynamic fog, so volume light map. Uh, here it's starting to to pop a little bit more, the colors. There's this like interesting uh, coloring going on. What I was doing there, I was changing the uh, basically the far clipping plane, because that really determines the look of the, of the entire thing. And here I'm setting this up for the uh, high-res render, so uh, 5120 by 2880, something like that. And yeah, this is after the render. The render took maybe about 40 minutes, 45 minutes. So I'm saving different files. I'm saving this scene in 1-2 viewing mode. Now I'm blowing out the dynamic fog. I've also saved the Z buffer. And I'm saving different, because you don't have to re-render for different um, lighting setups that I have. So I just try, I just cycle through them and I go like, okay, this is interesting and uh, save them as well. Because you can then combine them, combine them, sorry, in, um, in After Effects or Photoshop or whatever you like to use. So this is almost real time. You don't have to re-render to get all these different lighting, uh, and I say lighting, but they're also shading, basically lighting, shading setups, which is great. I would wish other 3D software could do that. I know there is some, but not the, uh, the regular stuff. So, I don't, not sure at this point if I'm gonna use them all, but I'm just getting a couple, and every time, so I'm watching them at 1.4 resolution, but I'm saving them as 1-2 resolution every time I go back to that 1-2, saving them, because if you save them, you will actually, they will, they will be smaller. So that 1-2 that resolution is the, uh, is the resolution that I'll be working in in After Effects. And here I'm just saving out uh, just the volume light. So only the, everything is, else is black. So basically, you know, for the compositors, uh, you can just have almost like you, you would have uh, different, um, di different passes. Have a, a Z buffer pass, a, a volume light pass, and then you can combine them. So here we go in After Effects. Just getting those different, different, um, different color variations that I've, that I've, that I've saved into the, uh, and I'm just playing around a little bit with the colors. And I'll try to, basically combine two different ones with the Z buffer. So in the foreground we'll see one and in the distance we'll see the other one. So the brown one is in the foreground basically. Okay, here I'm making in Magic Bullet Look Suite, I'm making a diffusion pass 
which I'll now multiply with the set buffer. So it's only in the distance. You'll get that diffusion look only far away. So that's, that's actually really uh, a little bit how, uh, how fog works. It diffuses the further you go away. So it's a, it's a trick that I use a lot. And it just gets that nice soft diffusion look, but not everywhere. So here I'm just getting that extra volume light only there in the top. So it looks like the volume light is a bit stronger on top than it is in the bottom. I've also added a depth of field here a little bit, just to slightly soften the foreground. I could, you could go really far with it, but I didn't want that, that, um, that depth of field look in here as much. But there were also some, um, some aliasing uh, and some little noise artifacts. They are kind of hidden a little bit with it. Here I'm getting another foreground in, which is even darker. So I really want that layered look, that dark foreground, and then we get that, that, that light world that we can see outside, like we're, we're inside a cave and we're looking outside. So these are some presets of Magic Bullet. We're really useful as starting points. Like you can, okay, this is way too green, but you know, you can kind of see what kind of, what kind of looks you can get with color correction. And um, you've got some great tools in there. So you get this diffusion as well, which I now apply really only very subtly. Some vignette, which actually I'm doing a opposite vignette by just making the edges a little bit more bright because they were already dark. And these spot exposures here, they can just um, just make a little bit brighter just some parts of the of the image. And um, that makes for, for a very interesting, more interesting look. Here I'm just darkening that corner, which I didn't really like. And I, you could do all this with Photoshop. The, the reason is that I'm just more accustomed to these tools uh, in After Effects, and also because these tools will translate into a, into a video. If 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 I was rendering a uh, an animation of this, then I could uh, I could use all these tools for the uh, which I do. For the uh, for the videos, so it's starting to look like a rich, colorful thing, where there are some interesting details happening, and um, I think I, at this point I didn't like that. Underneath, you can actually see the uh, the symmetry axis, which I always hate, and I'm trying to like hide it here a little bit by making it a bit darker. So this concludes the tutorial. This is the final image. Uh, it took me a little bit over two hours to make it, and I hope you enjoyed it. I'm Julius Horstheis. Bye.